This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The final part of this chapter um, is very much admin based, uh, related to employment income. And the topic at 9.4 is pay as you earn codes. Now, everybody gets a pay as you earn code, and obviously, um, everybody gets a personal allowance. So, if your personal allowance is 12,570, then your code will be 1257L. That's how it works. Now, this code would then be given to your employer, and they would use that code through the pay as you earn system to calculate how much tax you have to pay um, every time that you are they do a pay run. Um, however, there are other things that need to be added sometimes into a pay as you earn code, not just the allowances. So that can then affect the number. So you get your personal allowance. If you have personal pension contributions and you want high rate relief directly at source, that can go into there and there are expenses potentially. So if there's an expense that you get every year, um, there are things like um, um, clothing uh, tools that, that are recognized within the industry as being an allowable uh, expense, then that can be um, added in. Um, if you have a benefit in kind that is same year on year on year, or is readjusted every year, like with the cars, um, then that will be um, dealt with through your pay as you earn code. If you underpay uh, your tax or you overpay your tax, then that also will be readjusted by the revenue automatically through your code. And if you have some untaxed income, that will be dealt with in that way. And then it will be given a letter. <clears throat> Either L, see the last figure's removed there, and it would be you get a letter. So L, which is the one I explained to you. K, which means that you're actually paying, uh, you actually have more expenses than you have income. Um, so therefore, you, you're you always paying more tax that way. Basic rate, now that happens if you do not have, so if you change jobs and you don't have a P45 or any information to give to your new employer, then you're automatically given a basic rate code and they take 20% of everything. And that's readjusted once the coding is in place and the information has been obtained from the revenue and your tax will be adjusted accordingly. Um, NT is a no tax to be deducted. And we have one example here just to show you. Annabelle earns 20,000 and she has benefits of 440 and unpaid employment income tax of 132 and she's a basic rate um, taxpayer. So she has basically a personal allowance of 12570. Benefits in kind which we need to deduct so that she pays tax on and then the underpayment there's a calculation that goes with this one. You basically multiply it by 100 and divide it by 20, as you saw in the notes earlier, which it comes to 660. That gives 11470. So we remove the O and her code is 1147L. So you may have to do one of those as a multiple choice question. It's not an important topic. But obviously, it's something that you, you need to be aware of. Um, they use the last code notified the, um, unless a new instructions come. And that's why you might get a basic rate code. Because they have to use what they have available, not what they know to be true. Then at the year end, we have two sets of forms. We have a P11D and a P9D, which have to be available by the 6th of July. So you get two months, uh, two months, April, May, June, three months uh, to complete all the benefits in kind for your um, staff and send those off to the revenue. Um, don't get these very often these days. Don't worry about those. By the end of May, 
which is the last payroll, and you have to give a form P60. That P60 is a record of everything that you earned in the tax year between the 6th of April, and we're doing 23, and the 5th of April, 24. That has to go to each individual. You have to keep a record of that. You have to keep it for six years. Um, and then obviously the um, uh, you have to have a copy of your P11D. When you leave a job, you get a P45. Um, part one goes to the tax office. Part two or three and four go to the employee who then carries it with them, and takes it to their next job. And if you're joining, then you need to bring your P45 with you because that then helps them with operating this pay as you earn. So exam technique, how's this going to be tested in our exam? So the uh, topic of benefits in kind, very regularly asked. You might get section A questions for multiple choice for the odd thing, but then you might get a section C. So let's have a look what a multiple choice would look like. Christian is a high rate taxpayer, bear that in mind, has the following benefits, free use of the staff canteen, okay, 200 days, it's available to all staff, therefore we haven't been given any ways of calculating that, it's not one of the main things, so therefore it is exempt. Private medical insurance at the cost of £650. He made a claim during the tax year and the insurance provider paid out £350. Now the rule regarding um, these minor benefits, it's the cost to the employer doesn't matter the fact that they paid something out, that's irrelevant. And then £5 a week additional household expenses, that's exempt. So the answer that you would put in the box, or if you had to choose A, B, C or D, would be £650. And multiple choice question two. Doug is employed and as long as, as, um, as, as ooh, can't get my words out, sorry about that, as well has as his annual salary. He's also paid a bonus each year. The amount of the bonus is based upon his performance to the end of the previous calendar year. Which of the following bonuses will be taxed in 23-24? Now that was received 6th of April 23 and that was received 6th of April 24. Which one do you think falls in that tax year? Okay, it'll be this one, won't it? And that bonus, therefore, will go into his income tax computation. So use your common sense with that. Then you are likely, more likely, to get a full question with this. And we have a full example here, uh, which we are going to go through. So as we go through this question, I'm going to be... Um, making some notes on it. Um, what I would like you to do is to obviously watch this and make the notes and then I would like you to pause the recording and have a look at doing this for yourself and see how much of what you've been reading and how much of what you've been listening to you can remember. Now, no panics. Just remember you need to get more than half of it right. So don't look at what you got wrong, look at what you got right when it comes to marking it, because that's important. Obviously, what you got wrong, you need to make sure why you got it wrong and how you can put it right next time. But if you don't test your ability to see whether or not you've learned anything, then you're not going to know how much you have learned. It is important. So I'm going to go make some notes as we go through it. Pause. I will do a little pause too, and then I'm going to show you the model answer so that you can have a look and mark your own question afterwards. So, he is employed, Martin is. He's also got a partnership, which is, uh, he, during the year, 
he had a salary of £144,000 and bonuses. Okay, bonuses. Which ones? Which ones? Do you remember how we decided? We decided by date. Okay, so that one was in 22, 23. That one is in 23, 24, and so is that one. So we can ignore that one. And we can add those two in. Don't forget to put the dates on them so the marker can see that you know what you're doing. Okay. We've got here a car. Okay. It looks like he had one until December. And then he had another one from January, uh, which is a hybrid car with the, an electric range. So we're going to have to deal with that because that's a benefit in kind. Or shall I say, you are going to have to deal with that because it is a benefit in kind. And you're going to have to check that the check the um, CO2 emissions. Got that there. That there. Check the rates to see how that works and do the calculations. Not provided with any fuel. No fuel. That's excellent. Well done. Okay. Um, 6th of April, they provided him with an interest-free loan of eight, which he used to buy a bike. No repayments. Can you remember what the limit is for that? Yep, yeah, it was 10,000, wasn't it? So it's below the limit, so therefore it is exempt. Because it is below the limit. They allowed him private use of a home entertainment system. Um, so that's use of assets. Uh, we've got a charity donation here under the payroll system. That's deducted directly from his salary. He paid an annual subscription. That's a necessary expense. And allowed and a member of a health club okay not going to get that one because that's dual purpose because he's using it privately partnership he's been in partnership with norma and oprah since 2009 it's obviously an ongoing business the partnership trade profits for the year ended march so this is the size of the bucket that'll make sense if you've watched the partnership recording and lecture and read it because you know what a book it is until september it was shared 40 for him 30 for her and 30 for oprah and since october that's been shared equally so you're going to do have to do a profit sharing ratio oh he also had rent a room And if you've uh, watched the uh, chapter on property income, you will understand that the first £7,500 is exempt. So he only pays tax on the balance. Uh, dividends of 440 that will be exempt because of the first £1,000. Um, bank interest on some certificates. Ooh, what do you reckon to that? Can you remember way back in chapter two, I think? Saving certificates. They are exempt. Okay, I think I've given enough hints out for that one. You are now to work out his taxable income for 23 24. I'm going to pause for a moment. You are going to pause this and attempt to do it. Now, if you've not watched the videos up to this point, the recordings up to this point, then some of this won't make any sense. If that is the case, you can't finish the question off until you've watched those. As I've said at the beginning, you really should be watching these in order. If this is an exam style question, it's the first time we've come across one. So I'm going to pause it now. I'm going to give you time to breathe and then I'm going to show you the 
um, model answer. So this is the model answer and hopefully you did pause. So some of this information um, is copying from the question. So it's important to um, set up your pro forma and write all the information down that you can straight away because everything you copy across will give you half a mark. And then from there, you can then do the workings um, um, accordingly. So the salary is copied from the question. There are two bonuses copied from the question. And we chose those with dates. And you notice that they've been put there so that we can see clearly um, what's going on there. The car benefit is a working, two cars. Those are in the workings. And the note below we'll have a look at in a moment. Now, we looked at that earlier, didn't we? So just to write that down because that was exempt, wasn't it? Also, the health club membership was also exempt. Um, professional subscriptions, um, it, not exempt, that's the wrong wording. Um, not allowed, that was it, that's right. Because he used it for privately as well as entertaining. These two expenses were allowed. So it's basically these ones in the middle here where you've had to do the benefit in kind calculations. So if you copied the salary, the bonus, the charity, ta -ta -ta, that's one, that's two and a half marks. Isn't that wonderful? Two and a half marks for copying question into the answer. So please set up your pro forma and copy the various bits in. The property income, this was rent a room. That's also a copying question, dividends and the interest, which we said was exempt. OK, another three calculations, another one and a half marks. So we're up to five marks, one, two, three, four marks, <laughs> four marks before we even get any further. OK, so let's look at the notes for the benefits in kind. For the car, we round down. We then minus 55 divide by five gives us 11% plus the basic 16% is 27%, which is then used against the list price, time of portion, don't forget dates very very important so when you work out a benefit like this go back to the question and make sure that you read the question carefully to see that the you you're doing it for the whole year or part of a year the trading income this is the partnership ratio split calculation for you to have a look at remember to put in the zeros, that's you're also going to get marks for those. Okay. So, just a final note there. It's likely some parts of the Section C sections questions will test some admin. And there were four marks allocated here in the actual exam to this question. So, try to break these questions down as there is often more than one issue that needs to be discussed. OK, so those are the various different things that you need to bear in mind at the end of this chapter.